So not really expecting, True. but a team that we were expecting to be here is not here. And but the only thing is the pool. We do got to pull out the pool. We are. We do have the skull merchant on oh. ARP. And you, know, you see what I see? Map. Uh, we're playing chess. That's what I see right now. <laughs> <laughs> I see a very similar scenario we had last night in the South uh, Pacific Asian Cups. And that is a 4-gen on ARP. What's worse than a 3-gen on ARP? A 4-gen. Now, with that said, the gens are a bit further apart than last night's 3-gen, so survivors might have a bit of a chance here. It, they're, they're actually kind of spread out. You do have, like, a hill. You know, I don't know if they're running balance landing. There are a lot of exhaustion options available with this kind of setup. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know, eventually you're going to run out of stuff to, to run on. And we're getting a lot of tags early on. It seems like they're trying to attack this 4-gen. I don't know if they recognize it's a 4-gen. They might. But... I would have to imagine survivors have that called out. Again, this is Inazuma versus the Educational Bully Squad. And I can guarantee you with the pedigree that is on one side, they fully identify that this is a 4-gen. They are attacking it on all fronts right now. I think this is a survivor on each one of these gens. I mean, we see a lot of progress on these two gens. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see on the other ones, but maybe this is going to be their educational bully squad where they're showing how to break this 4-gen very early on, and then the game is just wide open after that, right? I would imagine. Again, we knew what the killer pools going into these matches were, and everyone knew there was a good chance there was a skull merchant, and that is going to be an eruption popping up on these gens. However, it looks like Nia's already exposed, so they are doubling down on one of these generators. They really want to get one of these generators out. But wait, basement There's is multiple. right here. It is. Oh my goodness. And this is a huge asset for the Skull Merchant. We saw it last night that the Skull Merchant will place a drone in basement sometimes and make it very difficult to cleanse. But survivors are working on gens at this moment, too. It doesn't have too much pride. I thought this was the gen that they were on earlier. It was, there was one over towards the 10 and 11 that I think had more progress, but I'm not sure. Nia once again getting exposed. They do come in for the unhook here. And yeah, there's one at the 10 or 11 clock that finished just now. Oh, that's huge. But the question is like, if as long as they don't get it down into basement again, they could definitely play around this three gen still. I would tend to agree. And yeah, we see the hill gen firing away. Skull Merchant in chase with Nancy still, and Nancy doing the Lord's work at this loop, not fading it out. And unfortunate hit there over the pal. That's going to be second hook coming in, unless there's a latent decisive strike. Unfortunate would be one ping. The 16 ping demon not going to fall, unfortunately. That that was a tasty hit on Wizzle's end. But like the, the perk setup here is definitely helping with the generators. True. But they're committing to some of these chases onto V1, trying to get someone out early. But the way that the survivors are pressuring the gens is kind of like you get your tunnel, but you don't get your three gen. True. So it's like there's a decision here. So, and they're they're definitely like executing it. Like we we see it. Absolutely, and that's a miss skill check. So we do know some perks. We know eruption. We also know overcharge and sloppy butcher. And as we're seeing these notifications as well, that is also the call of Ryan. And this is the full slowdown build I was expecting last night on Skull Merchant. They usually took some combination of Overcharge, Call of Ryan, and Eruption, but they didn't take Call of Ryan and Overcharge until now. Well, I feel like to get the same effect from pre-nerf, you do have to run both of them. Mm -hmm. I know um, our famous Skull Merchant we've seen recently has been running Oppression. Oh, but... yeah. Yeah, like oppression just so you can pressure more gens at the same time from one kick. But just to allow one gen to regress and a nice stun from Ace here. Gotta keep the chase up. Especially mm -hmm. now that they're they're one hit down. N negating. Oh that yeah, they're down. all exposed. <laughs> yeah. No, no one no no one matters about it. They just want to get the gens done. Once they break the gens, you you know, Skull Merchants is just an M1 killer with some some small haste. True. And looks like they're going to take the down here for Nancy. They don't want the tunnel to happen. And is this going to be a pallet stun? No, they're not even going to try for it. No, that's risky. That's very risky. Especially since it's V1. Mm hmm. It's a very good point. And these gens do have a lot of progress. They're not giving up here. And an immediate unhook as the Skull Merchant looks away. I'm curious if we're going to see a reset or if they're just going to be going for call-ups and free running. 
Well, if 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 you give the skull merchant just a little bit of breathing room and like setup, then you know she'll take advantage of it. And like what we see here, they kick a gen. They're on another gen. Then we see the unhook. They're already on the gen. So it's like she has no drones. There's nothing. I oh. see what they're doing now. They're taking away the drones from her, whatever they can. It's so fascinating. But now, yeah, now they're recovering the drones, coming back, and now Ace also exposed, running for their life in the corner. I wonder if they're gonna call out and rotate here. Ooh, oh, they're doubling out the jet over there. Look at that. Yeah, we do see the killer instinct, two killer instincts. But question is, did they get it? One's no, running, one one's staying. Oh. No, it's not oh, going to be in time. That's crazy. I wonder if there's an unbreakable coming in. They're going to need one as they've got two survivors slugged and getting a reset here is pivotal. Yeah, that's the pickup on hands. That has to be unbreakable, right? Because we saw two survivors on the gen. You'd imagine. Yeah, they're doubling it out. You can hear it again. We didn't hear a noise notification. So they, they didn't miss the skill check this time. And this might be the break. There's the break. They broke the fortune. They get it early on. So now the whole map is wide open. It really is. Survivor in basement for a second hook here. But now that they've lost their fortune, do you, okay, do they migrate to the three gen across the map? Is this a migratory <laughs> skull merchant? Uh, it looks like like you, you don't care about that hook in basement. You're like, all right, where's my next three gen? Where's my next three gen? Absolutely. One thing worth noting as well is they, the Survivor Squad didn't take the time to do the three gens on the other side of the map. They immediately attacked them on one side when they identified the four gen, and I think that's what let them broke it. They had more they had more aggression on that side of the map before Skull Marching could get up to it. Oh yeah, my goodness. but that's ooh, the, the greed. Big respect. But th this is also like you know the kind of like a double edged sword. You break the four gen, but like you, it's ARP. Like you, there's always a three gen on each side of the map true that's a good point and i think rocket might end up dying they let rocket die in the basement oh and they just barely going down there at the end there's the eruption on the generator i'm curious what i'm curious what their spread and split and plan here is if they let the survivor die in basement that must have been calculated right unless this one has a lot of progress it does a not a little bit now I'm curious on the decision on letting Rocket die in basement because hens should be available for that unhook. I thought so. Really curious. It looks like they might have been on this generator over here coming for the uh, the pickup. I wonder if they all migrated to that side. It's like, all right, sorry, your your sacrifice will not be in vain. We promise. <laughs> not sure here, but again, chasing the Nancy, doing a really good job pre-dropping this. Not much utility left over here, and I think Nancy's gonna have to go mid in order to avoid this chase. They got some pallets left. Ooh, swinging for it. But this, this is actually a really good chase, because V1, I believe, is on death hook. True. From what I recall. So if you can get this down pretty in a pretty good time, like, it's a 2v1 with three gens to go against a skull merchant. <laughs> It's a good point, and they do end up going down eventually. However, looks like Meg and Ace have reset. But now I'm really curious. You spent so much resources getting the two gens on one side if they can actually finish any of the other gens. Because now you got a three gen on this side. Was it all for naught? Yeah, so kind of the play is, you know, I don't know if you if you saw the, the Eternal game, but, you know, getting yes. the gen points is really important before kind of breaking that that generator setup because yeah you can break the generator setup but then if you get 4k you know after that like it's still a good result on the killer side like we have three gens remaining with two survivors mm -hmm. like yes they broke the four gen they showed us how to do it but if if it was flipped to where they did all the gens on the other side and then went for the four gen and showed us how to break it then then we would be looking at you know the gens already completed right that's a fair point i was <sighs> Just curious if that would come back to bite them. I really appreciated the effort they put on this side, but yeah, you're right. It might come back to bite them in the end as they didn't actually get as many gens as they were hoping to finish. Again, I'm wondering if it might have been a missed call out on the survivor dying in basement. It's the only thing I can yeah, think of. Yeah, I'm curious on the comms in between that. But with hens like running main, you can have a pretty good chase here as long as, True. As, long as the, the mind game here at the vault. Ah, see, see? The, the patience, the patience. 
from Hens. So good vault. The chase is still on, and that is a generator cross map being completed from mm. Laser. It is, and it looks like oh, I thought that would have been a hit if they sit on chase at the window there. There's the vault. I think this is now blocked. It's not blocked by the entity yet, and we haven't hit Bloodlust one. It looks like they will be going corner map, unless that's the scenario they're going for, since Hatch is not deterministic. If you have Delhi and Unbreakable still alive, and you're trying to go for a Hatch play, that is one way to try and deny the killer points here and give your own team a shot. We've seen it a couple cams in other comp games where you know, you know, the point system you deny the killer X number of hook stages by getting out. That that can be a winning tide. That might be their scenario here. It's like, okay, we've got the Adelian Unbreakable still available to us. Let's use that. Let's try and, you know, if we don't get all the gens done, let's get a survivor. Let's deny points then Let's get some points for ourselves and, you know, come back in the killer round. Yeah, but one thing to know is we 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 do believe Hens already used Unbreakable from that early slug where they That's were trying point. to pop it. So they are looking at just a slug right now, and like, they're trying to find laser. They know they popped the gen on this side of the map, mm -hmm. and they have the drone on that gen. So it's like, there's not really other places they can be except stealthing like edge map. True. Yeah, and that's what we might be seeing is uh, stealthing. I forget how the points work when it comes to bleed outs. I don't remember if they award full points or not. I don't think they do. I might need a I might I might need clarification on that part on that part of the rules there as far as uh how bleed outs are handled. But there's about it's about two minutes a little bit over two minutes left on the bleed out timer for hens here. And yeah, well, I imagine there could sure, be stealthing. Hmm? I'm pretty sure that is just kills and then hook stages after that for the tie. Mm, that might be what it comes down to then is if uh, the hook stages have to be called into question. So if yeah, if e uh, Educational Bully Squad's killer is able to 4K here, then the hook stages might come into matter, potentially. We'll have to see. We'll get confirmation from our glorious uh, admins and refs and mods. <laughs> Shout out to the refs and mods for the, the Community Cups event. There, there are hundreds and hundreds of players that come into this, and that that's a lot to navigate. That's a lot of people to manage, and our... our our mods and refs are, you know, they're the, they're the best. That like, we would not have this without them. Yeah, for sure. All right, so, it looks but like they're one, saying bleed one thing to note. Hooks. Yeah, one thing to note real quick. So with you know with hatch being RNG, there there is like a play that happens like in game where you see hens is about to bleed out, right? Right. And if you're able to pick up hens like 99, like there's just a little bit of sliver left then hens can te technically work a generator for free and if they get downed typically you know where hatch is which which is normally shack so the survivor can be all the way at shack right but that play can't really come into question i mean they could still do it but then hatch will still be an rng thing you right know, they would yeah. have to have to sacrifice hens instead of looking for this last survivor oh, look at that they're setting up the drone for the exit gate they know what's about to happen yeah they see the bleed outs uh, where was the second gate? Were they I split think gates? it was. Yeah, it's not split gates. They're on the same side. So exit gates are not what you want to see here as a survivor. So it's just going to come down to hatch on one side. And yeah, it looks like the bleed out will be all but confirmed here unless they find them. In, nope, nope. It's in the basement. <laughs> no basement. No basement. All right. RN, RNG, do your thing. Do your thing. We're about to go into hatch. Yep, it's about to go and into the end game. It could definitely make a difference in between games. Right, True. There is a bleed out. Hatch is available. Question is, where's the survivor? There's where's the, the survivor. Hatch? They are running for their lives here. Uh oh. Uh oh. They're Meg. gonna have to take a tag here because there's no pallet left. Interesting. They're not going for the hit. They they want to follow the survivor and like I guess get bloodlust three and beat them to whatever hatch they find. I've never seen this before. Yeah, I've actually never seen that before as well. Because you can typically zone a survivor to like th that corner where they were if they got a hit. Right. They can kind of zone them, but it looks like they're gonna play for it. Uh, the only thing is the survivor can body block if they can see the hatch from a distance and like play around it. True. Yeah, and this killer is playing for the body. <laughs> this is so weird. This is this is something I genuinely have not seen. 
ever. There's bloodlust too. And they're walking, they're like, fine, take your bloodlust. See what I care. <laughs> <laughs> So there, there's the chase ending, so that Bloodless is going to reset. Oh, and they lost him for a second. Yeah, Almost they did. worked, honestly. Yeah, well, Bloodless did reset, so that's something going for the survivor. But the question is, like, we still haven't seen hide nor hair of the hatch yet. This might be one of the weirdest chases that I am ever seeing. And now they're going against, like, all right, we'll walk, we'll walk. At some point, the skull merch has to, like, okay, they're breaking off. They say, like, all right, fine, I think I have an idea where the hatch is. Yeah, like it's got to be in this corner. Like they've they've searched pretty much the rest of the map. I think except Hatch or uh, Shack. Is it on Hill? It might be at Shack, honestly, because the I don't see it over here. It spawns on the other side of Main or Shack. Wait. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like what's going on here. It's got to be on this half of the map. Wait, wait, Laser might be doing something. Maybe stealthing to a gate. You, you can't stealth the gate. The like the, oh, yeah. the exit gate is blocked by the, the drone and now taking a hit. There's only one place it can spawn. And the question is, does the survivor get enough distance to get there at this point? They take the hit. This is now turning into an actual chase. And now Skull March is just going to zone them. Do they have an exhaustion perk in hand? It, I don't know. I don't see it. Now it looks like they're just running the filler pallet. And that's going to be mm. the down and and eventual 4k with two gens remaining indeed and that's going to be a really tough uh potential match here for uh sorry educational educational bully squad is such a, such a mouthful it's gonna be I so tough for i to hope hold we up. find hatch i'm kind of curious if it was shack because it spawns on the back side of it because i think the right the door's here they would have to and it was in oh the it corner. was it was at seven Oh no! And they ran right here, they but did. both of them couldn't hear. It. Why did they listen to me of all people? I'm incorrect most of the time. <laughs> I mean, I, I I see the I see the reasoning why because twins is a very like snowball killer. True. And if you can snowball where they're all injured and they're not ready to play against it, then twins can definitely four K at two or three gens remaining. It's a good point, and it looks like they do find somebody with a killer instinct, but it's Jake with the sprint for immediately. <gasps> That's so rude. Why would you do that to Victor? What did Victor do to you? He just came out of the, you know, just came out of Charlotte. They didn't do anything. Yeah. Victor just wants to come out and play. Let Victor play. You heard it here first, but that is going to be the corrupt intervention we see on the other side. It is. That's not the most central three-three-one split. It is a bit on the side of the main building, but I would still say that that is pretty close to a three-three-one split. Yeah, so not not the not the four gen we saw in the previous game, but it's definitely kind of manageable for twins because of the yeah. the two v four aspect of the twins. That's a fair point, and we do see Killer Instinct over here. It looks like they will be taking Victor for a ride. They do find Nia. Do they get the light up on the hit? No. Zooming right past them, and honestly, I feel this pain. Whenever I pilot twins, like it is so painful to get it when they are just running right in front of you. The hitboxes just change so frequently because of how the survivor can spin. Yeah, and I mean, we see Ots trying to like hold this bottleneck so that they can't work on any any of the gens. The only thing I'm kind of scared about is we haven't checked the gens. We don't yeah. know if someone has actually gone across. They and did... working the gen for free. Yeah, they did check the spawn early on, so I think you might be right. Yeah, they are. there are scratch marks back here, so they did send at least two survivors back here. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think, uh, what what is it called? Uh, Castle has fallen? When uh, when the, when the uh, defenses have been breached, and it looks like that is the case. Yeah, I think Nia's even going to be able to get out of here, potentially. Yeah, yeah they got just so much looping distance. around the rock, making mm -hmm. it to the pallet. They do recall Victor, so they are back here. It looks like they're going to zone him for the block, but like you said, the gens have been kind of unattended. Also worth noting, they did work on the gen, and they did leave, and that is regressing automatically. So we have Ruin, which is crazy. There's Ruin being broken. Survivors are going to jam this first gen on the hill, and oh, that is not what this killer was looking for. Oh, man. Like, doubling a gen early on. So the so now now we have our two one three split. Mm -hmm. So it's now that's a lot of pressure on the twins. They only have two injured so far. So you have two healthy survivors, but they get 
kind of a cutoff here, but ah, they actually do make it to another tile. Yeah, They're they do. Gonna make it to the pallet. Gonna gonna fake it out. They do get the pallet to drop, but like really good rotation from Ace making it to another tile, another pallet. But mm -hmm. they're just gonna drop it. I mean, was it really good M1 chase? Oh, they do get the hit oh. over the pallet. I, I, Victor actually being kind of useful there is a. Uh... Ace can't afford to, you know, be trying to get rid of them during any time as they need to be able to vault it out in moments no miss. And this will be first hook coming in for the survivor. But I, I'll be honest. And we see Aura's. They have barbecue and chili. I mean, the installation is great, though, from barbecue. True. You know which gen to pressure and which one you don't need to check. So it does save you time. And, you know, DVD is all about seconds. Like, seconds True. make a difference. That is true, but yeah, now you know that one person was over there ready for the unhook end. Oh no, getting the miss, and that's going to be a kick on Victor again. They're not even going to go back to, uh, not even going to go back to pressure the unhook here. It looks like they're just going to be sitting uh, in the middle trying to pressure these gents, but they haven't even started regressing yet. I mean, we hear a lot of progress on this gen. Like, there, there's a lot of pressure on the gens, but not too much pressure on the survivors right now. And a nice balance. And, like, the chase keeps going. Like, you don't want to give an M1 hit to Charlotte. True. Or else Victor's just going to come out and down you, like, immediately. Because he'll, he'll catch up. It's a very good point. And worth noting, survivors are doing very good twins counterplay. All survivors are reset at any given time. Victor calling the bluff on me. And they will take the tag. Second generator falling for the survivors here. Third gen falling in the middle. Third. And now we're in a situation where they can't give another generator or it's lights out. I do want to note one thing, the add-on of uh, the glove. I think I that one that increases the shriek radius. So I, I am curious on the pick on that. That is really different. I'm not really sure, but regardless, uh, I, 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 Toy Story we've seen, and there's another of, a number of other add-ons we've seen before, but yeah, that's just, that might be the first time I've ever seen the glove on the survivor. Or I'm sorry, on the skiller. And honestly, props for knowing it. I, I've never seen it in play. Yeah, there's a lot of like teamy kind of add-ons on the twins. But I do want to note we did see Jake with the Sprimpers earlier. Mm -hmm. Sprimpers is paired normally with Deliverance. That's a good point. And and I believe Jake did get the first unhook, so we are chasing Deliverance. And so right now the other three survivors just working the gens, not worried about um, them getting on a hook because they'll just be able to unhook themselves and having like a really good chase even against Victor and Charlotte kind of body blocking it and yeah. it works. They do get they the body do block. Get it. Now the question is, do you follow up with Charlotte? Do you switch to Victor? Well, they will be switching to Victor, but can you catch up with a Jake? Some kind of missed skill check over to our right here, and they will be following up with Victor. Do they get this down or not? And like you said, even if they do, it it, it might just be the Delhi player. <laughs> Yeah, so they're, they're just trying to die as far as possible away from the generators. And they get the fourth gen. And Victor's running for the fifth gen. Because they do know there's a missed skill check early. So they are mm -hmm. working the gen. Gonna there's snipe! Another. They do get it. They do get it. Yeah, I but don't think you survivors. can even get back over there. Even with the missed skill check there, I think that is going to be the fifth generator finish. And again, the fourth generator has already been finished here. So we do know that the win con has been achieved by Inazuma. And they will be taking the W here, uh, barring something else. But they did finish the fourth generator. So, well played and hats off to them. It looks like, yeah, they're probably going to be able to finish the fifth one over here. Yeah, yeah there's the play for the best placement, Deli. It's so brutal. Like, like you said, Deli unbreakable against twins, just kind of ruthless and sad. Yeah, the, the the biggest. Oh, that that's what I thought. I think they're the dead hard decisive make your or uh, made for this uh, player because they were faster oh. with Victor on him last time. I think Ace has made for this as well. That was a strong DH. It was. It's the DH that makes you mauled. Oh, oh, what? That actually jumps. I like me a the fake out. That actually got me. It right? felt like he actually left the pallet and all of a sudden just vacuumed right back to it. That was a really nice stun from the ace. It really was. Well done to them. And looks like Victor coming out for one last hurrah here. I don't know if they get this hit on ace. I think Nancy's going to get the body block. Jake as well. There's a lot of they get it. But they've got enough for heal techs, I think, here. 
Actually, you can yeah, crawl with the double yeah, heals. Got... Yeah. I think I think it's enough time for a double heal. They get the pickup. A single heal. Yeah. That guy's boom. He has to have. We're gonna live forever. And there goes the kicking down. That's gonna be the four out from team. Is it Inazuma? I'm, I'm trying to pronounce it. Inazuma. <laughs> yeah, we know we mo most of these players from other teams. And I think that uh, this is what I like about the community cups is the community cup teams aren't bound to traditional teams. So if you like, you know, want to blur the lines a little bit, if you will, you can, you know, kind of make these hybrid teams from, you know, other teams that exist currently.